Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for High Velocity Radio. Lee Cantor here, another episode of High Velocity Radio, and this is going to be a good one. Today on the show, we have Ernesto Mandowski, and he is with the Million Dollar Machine. Welcome. Thank you, Lee. Happy to be here. I am so excited to learn what you're up to. Tell us about the Million Dollar Machine. Well, the million, most companies, most growing companies struggle to keep up with all the internal changes as they're getting busier as they're scaling. And so what we do is we help companies design systems so that they can not only increase profit, but increase the peace and the performance that they're feeling along with all the growth. So is that an issue you find in the companies you work with that they don't have their processes correct? You know, every company has processes, but they also have just so many tools that they're using. They have like six different communication tools. And so it's it's really unclear which one to use at what time, which creates a lot of the confusion. And the fact that every day a new one appears, does that make things worse? Oh, yeah. It doesn't help that chat GPT is keeping everyone excited about new AI capabilities, you know? So now, how does it work if somebody works with you and your team? So every client, they start with us through a 90-day program. And in those 90 days, we set up six core systems. The first one is how they set goals. The next one is how they cultivate relationships. The third one is how they manage projects, how they manage work that gets done internally. The fourth one is how they communicate and promote their message. And the last two is how they design training programs and how they keep it all together through weekly, monthly, and quarterly planning cycles. So we believe that these six systems are what keep the foundation of any business. So someone can't just hire you to come in and fix their kind of marketing automation? No, it's it's never one problem. Everyone goes through this cycle because as you're going through it, you uncover all of the problems that exist. And that's what usually happens in the second phase of work. And then what is the outcome if they follow your plan? The outcome is that everyone feels a tremendous sense of peace. Everyone has immediate clarity on what the company is prioritizing. There's ownership and understanding of who needs to do what by when. And when you have that level of clarity, everyone can feel confident around when work will get done or when it won't get done. Just clear now. And then are there kind of, is their workflow now moving more efficiently or is it a different workflow altogether? No, we usually, we like to, we like for clients to preserve as much as possible of their existing workflows. We just suggest that they integrate what they're doing with aspects of what we teach. So for example, clients probably have a weekly meeting probably is some sort of a weekly status check-in. But we want their status check-in to be, we want for them to use our our software to run that status check-in because our software helps them review all of the projects that they're working on, all of their priorities, all of the relationships that need to be followed up with. And so we kind of blend both worlds together. So um, what's the genesis of this idea? How did it come about? I spent 10 years in restaurants and uh, working in restaurants, working in startup operations and even working in Deloitte and Fortune 500 companies. The challenge, even though the size of the business is very different, the challenge was, was very much the same in that there was so many things happening and people couldn't keep up with all of the initiatives, all of the requests because all of these businesses were using so many different communication tools. So I said, there must be a way to be more effective and efficient when collaborating, when delivering projects, when building a business. And so that's when I discovered a software called Notion. And I kind of took my best practices around designing these workflows. And I've used this tool, which is extremely customizable, to implement it in over 50 companies across 10 different industries. 
Now, you mentioned that um, your system touches on a variety of aspects of running a business. What was kind of the early users of this? What were their challenges? Was it the holistic, like you're describing, with issues in multiple areas? Or do, were, were they coming to you typically with an issue in one area? And in order to solve that one area, you had to kind of, you know, at least discuss the other areas. People typically come to me saying, hey, we want to grow our business. And so I'll ask them, how many clients do you work with? And they'll say any number from eight to 15. And I'll say, so what happens when you double the size of clients? And they'll say, well, we, we wouldn't know how to fulfill that. And so that's why it goes back to the way through which I designed my, my program. It's not just one problem. You have to look at the entire system and how it's set up. So that's why every client starts with a holistic analysis of, of how they are organizing their business, how they're setting goals, how they're tracking relationships. So it, even though a client thinks it's one area, it's usually a number of areas that they need to fix. And then what's kind of a symptom a potential client is having that the million dollar machine is the solution towards? Uh, the feeling of overwhelm. Uh, this feeling of overwhelm, this feeling of stagnation, they haven't been able to increase the capacity. Maybe they've only been able to bring on three new clients each month, but they can't bring on five or, or six. It, it's too much of a, a demand on the teams. And so when they, when you don't see that revenue is growing or number of new clients is growing, that is a typical symptom of a probably time to improve your workflows. And are you working with these people individually or is this group or is it a webinar based like cohort learning? There's two ways of doing it. One is through a cohort in which everyone is learning to make this information accessible. And for those who need more in-depth support, I do offer working one-on-one -on -one with people getting into their business and implementing what we teach. So what was kind of the first hint that you were onto something? Uh, the first hint was when I applied my same methodologies for a marketing agency and an organizational trainer and a coach and a life coach. The, the three of them, vastly different, model, vastly different businesses, but they all experienced the same pain and they all experienced the tremendous gain when we were able to set up their business system. They all were able to increase their capacity. We productized their business and they were able to triple their capacity. So I said, you know what? Like, I think this is the thing. And is it industry agnostic? You mentioned several use cases. It is industry agnostic. Uh, we primarily like to focus on businesses that have a services model. Uh, these services model are more complex and it requires moving pieces across different collaborators on your team. This doesn't really help people who are selling $30 t-shirts on Etsy or you know, $200 products on Amazon. It doesn't really apply to them or you know, them or manufacturing businesses, mostly for services. So people who are kind of selling the invisible? People selling the invisible. <laughs> the invisible and very tangible. And then... um do you help productize that? You used that word earlier. Yeah. And for those who don't know what that means, uh, typically services businesses that are earlier on in their development, a, you ask them, well, how do you, how do you help a client? And they can't explain it to you because they've never written down all of the steps. And so what I do is not just write down all the steps, but we set up automations to support the delivery of that step. Sometimes it's reminders. Sometimes it's laying out a list of tasks according to a schedule so that a team can follow a timeline when they're working with their clients. Um, it's really turning that service into a product, into something that is tangible. And is that a product that is um, kind of hands-off? It's a digital product? Um, no. Services... 
are usually a, it's a service. Sometimes, I mean, a website is a digital product, but the building a website is a service. And so we turn that service, we, we turn that service into a product to make it as simple as possible for teams and contractors to understand what is the progress of that service. Right. But productizing sometimes also means that you're taking something like a service and then turning it into an ebook or a course or a, you know, a series, a webinar series. It could mean that. Uh, I don't particularly focus on that. Those are more acquisition tools when you're trying to enhance your marketing. I focus more on the fulfillment side. So the services that work best in this system are services that are kind of bespoke so that they're creating a service that is being delivered kind of uh, customized to an individual, not something that's like a digital product they're just buying off a shelf. Correct. The clients that we work with typically have $10,000 plus offerings in their services. So it's something that is extremely uh, custom and bespoke to their client's needs. And it's delivered like kind of a human to a human. Yes. It's not like scalable to get 10,000 sales necessarily. No, not 10,000 sales. We like to teach people, hey, if you have a $10,000 offer, you will need 100 clients to build a million dollar business. Right. So it's to create higher value uh, offerings for less people. Correct. And then uh, what is kind of your biggest success story thus far? Or you don't have to name the name, but maybe explain the challenge they were having and how you were able to help them overcome it and get to a new level. Sure. So we have a, we had a $3 million software development shop and they, you know, got into the business and I asked them, Hey, what are you focused on? What are your goals? They said, well, we'll get back to you. And it took them two days to get back to me with the Google Sheets that they needed to pull the goals from. So after working together, we were able to get their 30 people in this company onto my 6P system. And now they're at 5 million in sales and they're excited about the prospect of hitting 10 million over the next three years. And it's that peace, it's that clarity that my systems have given them that give them the confidence to hit 10, 10 million. Now, is your system kind of a, a do it yourself, do it for you, do it with you? Well, if the client wants to set it up themselves, uh, I do offer do it yourself offering. Um, there is also the done with you where I support them on a weekly basis. Um, and then in very rare cases, I offer done for you. But this is all based on client's budget and availability. So now, um, how long does it take to get a noticeable result? Three clients different, but people typically feel the results right in the middle of the implementation. They already feel clearer about how they're fulfilling their service. And so within 45 days, they're already feeling the confidence of increasing their capacity because everything is down on paper, it's in the system, and they know that they can serve twice as many clients in any one month. So it takes around 90 days to implement the entire system? Correct. And then once it's implemented, is it like you're done now or is it something that you got to kind of be continuously tweaking over time? Well, businesses are uh, eternal work of art. Uh, you will have to tweak over time. Businesses typically grow and then they have to adjust whatever was built for them to account for the new level of capacity. So it is something after we, after the 90 day program, we do offer continuity programs to continuously train and support the operator that is owning the system. Uh, typically the operator maybe didn't necessarily work in a tech company or they didn't work in fortune 500 company or they don't necessarily have the, the scaling mindset. Um, so that's why we offer this continuous training program in the form of a membership. So the first uh, stage is this 90 day kind of launch. And then after that, if they choose, they can become a member and then have ongoing support. Correct. And then if somebody wants to learn uh, 
uh, and get more information and maybe have a more substantive conversation with you or somebody on the team? What's the website? What's the coordinates? Yeah, you can go to the million dollar machine.com and you could press the button that's right at the top around calculating your potential. We offer complimentary strategy sessions around building the scorecard of your future business. Uh, we talk through what your price is, how many clients you need to serve, your conversion rate, how many calls you need to have, and really set yourself up to have that clarity before we actually get started to build your business. Good stuff. Well, congratulations on all the success. Thank you. Um, and uh, is there anything you would need from our listeners? What could we be doing to help you grow your business? I would love for you to share. Uh, we have a monthly workshop every month where people can come and do the work in, in community uh, called the Design Your Machine Experience. And that is something available to all listeners, totally free, totally complimentary. Um, if you could, we can include a link in the show on where you can sign up and uh, just spread the good word. And will they find that on the website? Uh, we will find that at the end of the growth scorecard. After you get your growth scorecard, we'll have information on how you can join our monthly training. Good stuff. Well, Ernesto, thank you so much for sharing your story today. You're doing important work and we appreciate you. Thank you, Lee. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We'll see you all next time on High Velocity Radio.